Hello everyone. We have just finished the previous session. We'll give everyone just a, a minute or so to get connected for this session and then we'll get started. It is for the workshop B with Francine Thomas. Hi everybody. Um, I'm doing this on my own so just please be with me while I'm doing this. Uh, so it's great to be here and I really enjoyed those demonstrations this morning. Just so fabulous. Uh, definitely friends and floral art, that's for sure. Uh, so this is a concept, I did a, a really big version of this for a competition and people have been asking me, well, how did you do it? Um, and so I thought, well, I'll share that with you, how I actually made it. But we're going to do one, um, because we set the packs out, we were trying to think of plant material that was preserved, um, items that you could all have that were the same instead of sending leaves and things like that. Um, we decided to go with the sand paper for a textual contrast. So we've got the sand paper. And um, so uh, here we go. <laughs> so what I've got here is I've got this spike and I've this here is about 40 centimetres high, uh, which is a good size for what we're doing for a tabletop. So I've got that all mounted, that's all black. I'm just going to put that to the side for now. You'll also have some A4 paper. It's a really good idea to get a concept in your head and to play around with something that doesn't cost a lot is to use the A4 paper. And I thought the easiest way is we've got our piece of sandpaper. So it's all about trying to work into the scale. So we've also got the um, foam core board, which I like to use. And I think you've got white, but I couldn't get that. So I've just got the black. Um, and the idea was this was almost big enough to fit onto the foam core board. The foam core board is actually going to be the base of our mechanics. Um, so what we need to do is we were looking at the shapes and the idea is to get your piece of paper and I've got a plate here, I've just been, got just a, this is just a little saucer and we're going to work on the angle. So you're going to bring your plate on the angle here like this and start and aim for that other corner there. We're going to do it on, the, on diagonally and just mark the shape. Now, you might want to change the shape. You might want to experiment with your own shape, but this is a good starting point. So all I'm going to do is do this little half circle. I don't know if you can see that there. Can you see the little half circle that I've got? And then we're going to get something that we can line up. So I'll just use a piece of stub wire. It will probably be nice and straight and line that up across to that corner. And again, with your marker pen or whatever you've got to use, line it to that corner and aim for the end of that half circle. My pen's gonna run out because it just wants to do that. And then come down and do the same and line it. So you're making like a teardrop shape really. Line it down here. It's definitely run out. That's okay. So what happens when you leave the cap off? So we've just, if you just think of a teardrop shape, now can you actually see that or is that a little bit um, hard to see? So you've got like a teardrop shape, you need to have, have a little bit of a gap. So when you line up your piece of um, sandpaper, it's going to fit within that shape. So it's going, when you do it on the angle, it's longer from here to here. So we want, that's why we're doing it on the diagonal. So then you're going to get your shape and you're just going to cut it out. You've got the teardrop. Here we go. It's a nice teardrop shape. But experiment with this, but it's really good fun. And then lay it on top of your piece of cardboard, as you know, we might do it on top of our, I need to do it on here first. And because I'm using um, black, I thought I'd pinch from my husband's workshop because he's an engineer, he's got white marker pens they use on the steel. And I thought you'd be able to see what I'm doing. So now we're going to use this template um, and we're going to draw it on here. But before I do that, this is where your experimenting comes into it. We're going to cut down the center of the teardrop to the center of the circle like this. And then what you do is you're going to do this and you're going to make a really cool shape. And this is what we're going to use as the basis to our design. Um, so again, you can make lots of different shapes, um, but this is a really good start. So, and then I'm just gonna cut a little bit of a circle out, just a little one in the middle, just like that. You see that there? 
Now you lay it on top. If you're happy with the shape you're going to achieve by splitting it, this is when you would lay it down onto your piece of foam core board. Um, you could use cardboard, but the foam core board holds its shape better and a corrugated cardboard will fold on the, on the corrugations and you'll fight it. Whereas the foam core board, we're going to manipulate and it's going to hold it. Then you're going to get your mark pen and you're going to trace around this shape. Trace around it, a little circle in the middle. Get your line and aim it for the circle and aim it for the edge. You want this to be quite precise. Aim it in here to the centre, like this. Can you see that there? Now that you've done that, this is where you need to watch your fingers, okay? And you've got your cutting board, and I'm just going to use stand out and press quite hard on the front core board. And pop it, get that away. We need a sharp one. I use them all the time, so they never sharp. How bad is that? Do watch your fingers. I might just take that piece off. And I'm not fighting it as much. We need to cut through. Just take your time doing this. You need to be quite precise and be happy with what you're doing. Cut it through there. And then we're going to go around the edge here. Now, I was going to do this on a white cloth, but I thought I don't want to cut a hole in it. So it's a bit hard to see on the black base, but I'll lift it up so you can see. Just cutting around, cutting your shape. Yeah, we are against, I've gone against the um, plain walls that you can see. And now we're just going to split it here where I've got it cut to the center. And we're just going to use the knife here and just cut a little piece out. Always try and cut away from yourself, not towards your hand. Pop that through. And I'm just going to plug my hot glue gun in. It's getting a bit hot, so I've just unplugged it. So now you've got your piece like this, and we're going to split it like, like so. Now, when you're doing this, you're thinking, oh my gosh, that's getting crinkled. What I tend to do is I fold it over the edge of my table. So I'll bring this out of the way now, just for the moment. Pretty much finished cutting. And then I bring it over the edge of the table and I manipulate it, just folding it over and it's crushing the foam inside. Now you only want to do one arm when you're doing this, one side. Because as you're working it around, you'll work it around that end and go halfway. And that's because we want it to fold this one, I want to fold down. So I'm just manipulating that foam with my hand. Where are we? Sorry, I'm manipulating that with my hand so that it's going to come down. And just soften it with your hands as you're working. And it pays to do this before you start putting on the cork. Uh, the cork, you can use cork, uh, the sandpaper. And we've got one going that way, so now we need to manipulate this one going up, so we need to go the opposite way. So again, going opposite way, over the table. And now I've got that nicely manipulated, it's working, how I want it to work, scratching it with your hands. I've tried it with the corrugated cover and I didn't like it as much, so that's why I'm using the foam. Now you've got that really nice solid shape. You've got that form there. Does anyone understand that? It looks quite cool, doesn't it? So you can really have a play with this. Now once you've done that, then you're going to lay this onto the onto your piece of sandpaper, and you need to have a little bit of an overlap around the edge here where you're going to join the two pieces of sandpaper together. So lay it on there. Again, tracing over it, but allowing a bit of a gap this time, a little bit of an edge when you're doing it. Good. 
and then come around the top here. I'm going to cut that out. And then you're going to go up the center again. And do a little bit of a cut out with that center piece. It's just a little one. Oops. We've got our piece of sandpaper and lay the other one over the top of the second piece to get it the same. Again, tracing over that. Going around. Okay, I'll just cut around that one. Up. Now that we have our two pieces of um, sandpaper ready to go. Now this is where you can either cold glue or you can hot glue it onto your piece of foam tool board. I'll just have a bit of tidy up here. I might bring my little, oh no, I can just put it here. So you can either use your hot glue gun, which I'll just see if I can get this one up. I might need some more. The hot glue does hold it better um, when you're doing it in a hurry like this, but um, you can also use double sided tape depending on what you're using. So let's get this on here, go right around the edge. But because I'm doing the um, we want to do this as the workshop, I thought I'd use the hot glue. So if you've got a hot glue, whenever I'm using a hot glue, I always have a glass of cold water nearby in case I burn my fingers. Who can relate to that? I know I can many a time. So go right around, make sure you've got a good covering right around that edge. Get your piece of foam and just carefully line it up. You have a little bit of a, you can skip it around a little bit, move it around a little bit, lay it onto your, onto your foam, like this. You've still got that little bit of a gap in the middle there. <clears throat> if you haven't glued it together, <laughs> still got your little gap. Now we're going to do the same on the other side. Plenty down on the edges. Maybe down where you've got, maybe because I'm going to join that. So with the second one, make sure you put more onto the sandpaper where you're going to join it. Okay, then lay the second piece on and line it up. And then you're going to just stick them together at the edge. Work your way around. Let it down, make sure you're happy with the way it's sitting. If you've got any overlap, that's fine. And now you've got your both sides done. So it's quite a good way of doing it. If you've got a little bit of black showing, that's all white showing, we'll just cut that little piece off. You might need to give a light trim. But don't go too, too serious in that centre bit because we're going to cover this anyway. So let's cut that out through here. Got too many pieces of scissors here with me. You know, we've got the blunt ones and then we've got the sharp ones. Those there, I'll get them a good, my good ones here. That's better. So now we've got those there, and make sure you've got it glued on the edge. If you haven't, you can do another little bit of a run down the edge here and glue it. 
If you've got your cold glue, just allow time for it to become tacky before you try and do this. If you do it when it's still wet, you'll end up with a real mess. So just wait till it becomes tacky before you start sticking it together. So I'm just going in and just going along the edge there now, just putting a little bit of glue just to join that together. And right round here. Here we are. My glue gun's come unstuck. It's okay. Yeah. So now you've got this here, and just once you've done them, glue them together, then manipulate them again with your hands. Once it's dry, manipulate it again. One going one way, one going the other way. Just manipulating it with your hand. And where it's come apart, just put a little bit of glue there, stick it together. So we're ending up with this look here. Okay, so we've got to keep our all the way around, just give a bit more manipulation in through here. Just bending it with my fingers. I mean, now that's it. Now what we're going to do is, so it's everybody quite happy with that? You're cutting your shape, you're gluing it, making sure that you're really happy with it. Once you've got it there and you're really happy, then you're going to get your stub wire. And this is where I was an AB technician on the farm. For those that don't know, I used to uh, brush these in lap cows. <laughs> so I'm very good at doing this for those farmers. You can actually just thread this into the foam core board and just gently working it in as you're working. You can feel it feeding it through the foam. And we want one upright and one to go down. So just feed it through. You could do this prior if you weren't too sure how to do it. So feed it in through there and cut one side. This is just to give it an extra bit of strength, but it's pretty strong anyway, so it should hold fine. And then we'll do one on the other side. And on the other side, through there, beat it in. That's it. That's it. So now we've got this here. Okay, so once you're happy with that, I mean, I'll tidy this up a little bit later. I know because a lot of you want to get going with the workshop, but this is how we start it. And I'm going to plug that back in. It seems to come unplugged. So we'll stick that together. Put that aside for now. Bring up your spike. You've got your spike. And you've got a um, seven centimeter uh, wet oasis sphere. Now, it is better to use the dry um, rather than this one, but we're using this one today. We're going to cut it in half. We're going to take one corner off, one edge, one side off. So just like that there, you see that there on the table? So taking one side off here, and we're going to do the same for the other side. Then you're going to get your hot tape, and you're going to come down about, that's probably about 10 centimeters, and get your hot tape, and we're gonna go around, and we're going to go around a few, quite a few times here. Now, if you didn't want to see the silver spike, you can cover this with um, the stem text, the brown stem text, or depending on the colors you're using, you could use the green, you could bind it in jute, but because I'm showing you how to do the mechanics, I thought if I bound it, you wouldn't be able to see what I'm doing. I'm just putting like a little plug so it won't slip down. And then we're going to go upside down and we're going to put our, in the center, we're just going to feed on the sphere, the dry sphere. And we're going to get our hot tape. And we're going to come up around the top. And you go around. And then you go back down, cross it over. Up. This is going to hold it into place and then back around. So a little collar of it, and it's going to hold it. So as everybody can see what I've done there, if I step to the side, which side am I going? This way. See how that one's done there? So I've got the little side off here, and then I've bound it, I've crossed it over to hold it. Then we're going to get our piece of board, and we're going to work out where we're going to put it. And to mount it onto here. You might need just to have a bit of a wiggle. And work out where you want it to go, and then we're going to put a little hole in through here. So just using, um, I could use my stub wire, 
just watch your fingers when you're doing this. You want to put a little hole, one on one side, one on the other, opposite side. And then you also want to do two holes further down the bottom. Well, actually, probably just one will be fine because that's going downwards. So then we come back up here where we've got the hole here. That is where we're going to put our 22 gauge wire in through the hole. And through the hole like this. And then we're going to wrap it around this, the um, rod. We're putting it around. And we're going to bend this other one down. And find the hole again. I want to just do the one down the bottom, actually. I only need one down there. Did I put it down there? I'm talking to myself now, which is very scary. I might need to put another hole down here. I do get a whole um, little hole thing for doing this, but I don't know where I put it this morning. So. so I put another little hole in, and we're going to tie it down here at the base. So tying it again down the base around the rod. And this is going to secure our mechanics. It all comes down to very strong mechanics when you're doing this design. You can go, the one that I did for the design of the year, I did an extremely giant version of this. And um, it was well and truly stable. So now you've got the base of your mechanics there. So it looks really, really effective when you see it like this. And now you can even lay this where it's actually on a design going into a horizontal or you can go vertical, you can completely change the shape. I would normally cover this so you wouldn't see the silver rod, but because I wanted to show you the tying here, so we've got it tied here, um, wrapped around, and now I'm gonna put the second sphere on. And this one's just going to be offset. So I probably should have waited a minute before I tied that second place up, but that's okay. We'll just squeeze that one on there. No, that's not going to work. Okay, so wait before you tie that one on maybe. Just come up a little bit. That's it. Put the sphere on first. You have to offset it when you do it. Then do your wire. Put your wire in there. And then wrap it around. And then just to secure it again, lots of long foam. Um, we're going to just get a bit of the pot tape and just going to wrap that pot tape around just to take it around the top of the rod this time. It's really just to secure it all together. Um, you can get the ones that are netted, the spheres, but they're no good doing this with them because you've got to cut through the mesh anyway. You could pre-wrap it once you've done this in the netting, but then you'll strike other problems. So I just prefer to do it like this, come around. Piece up and through here. Bring the button up and come. That's it, carefully. That's how I want to go. And just secure that one onto the top. So now you've got a really interesting mechanic. And like I say, you can do so many things with this. So I'll just have a bit of a tidy up for a minute. Here's my cloth. So I'm sure you can see you the possibilities of this and the different concepts that you can come up with. So now we've got here some of the um, gum. You will receive some pres the preserved gum. Well, I didn't have any, so I planted one tree and like I said, I really need to leave it alone. Um, and then I sprayed it with some burgundy spray to match what you've got. Um, and so I'm just going to put a little bit of this in through here. Here's my base. A little bit down and under here, coming down, but coming up and around, tucking it in quite tight. Thank you. 
spinning it around a little bit so you can see. I could put this on the turn table, but I'm just going to do turn it like this. It's very light. So put a couple more of these in through here. Just to tuck them in. smaller stuff and through here to come down a little bit. Not sure if I like that, I might take it out. Never be afraid to move it out if you don't like it, take it out. Um, you can also roll these and pin them if you want to, that's why we've got mossing pins on your list. And um, so if you wanted to use mossing pins and roll them, you can roll them. So we're just trying to fill it up. We've only got a few flowers to put in here, but I have done another one to show you the possibilities of this design. Just arranging the gun and through here, really just covering it, just moving it around. Hope you can see that okay. Then I've got some of my carnations. Now we were going to use carnations this time. So when you take them out of the box, I've got the pin in underneath, just squeeze them at the neck. They're soft, just like a normal carnation, and gently open it with your fingers by just pulling it open because it's been all held tight. Get your 22 gauge wire. And yes, it has got a pinhole, but I prefer to go straight through the carnation like I normally would. Bring it down to the neck. Get your tape. And you can just tape over the top. Around the top here. Tape around it. I was going to have these pretty done, but I was funny a bit, being a bit slow this morning. <laughs> Moving it around, cutting that, cut the wire, and you put one in. They're nice and vibrant, these are. Take it in quite tight. You need to give it a fringe. You might even be able to put them straight in without wiring. Just open another one up. You need to have unity and color balance, so we're going to bring some down and through the back. Yep. We've only got four, so we need to take the color right around. Put another one in through here, like this. Um, and then you've got a little bit of your amaranthus. This is preserved amaranthus, and Mario and I thought it would be really nice to be able to pop this in your little box of goodies as well. So I'm going to cut these, and then I'm going to wire it with my 22 gauge wire, doing a U bend, laying it over the top, like this, laying it over the top. Pinching it to the top and then winding it around like you normally would. And then we're going to pop this in underneath here. So that it comes down. And you can do a few pieces of this. You've all got one piece each. There's quite a bit on one piece. Again. Oops, Daisy. Yeah. Oops, a dozy, that's not good, is it? Oops, that's why you wire them. Okay, I was being a cheat. <laughs> I'll just wire that down. Maybe a bit of a heat wave here at the moment and it's very hot and I'm, I'm, I don't like the heat, so I'm... <laughs> I'd be no good over there at the moment. <laughs> All right, and we're going to a little bit more up and through the top here. Just turn this around, make sure I'm happy with the way it's working. A little bit to drip down. Coming in through there. And then what we're going to do is that's come off a little bit, probably need to straighten that up, but that's okay. We'll sort that out in a moment. Oh, it's because we put the other tie in. I didn't, I didn't secure it with the second place, the second wire here. Where have I put my stuff away? Okay. So we need to do another wire. Oh, there's the hole. 
I told you all to do it, and I didn't do it myself. That means that. So do this before you put all your plant material in, it is so much easier. And you're going to pull it back into it so it's actually holding its shape. That's better. Oh, goodness me, I can't see. Right. That one went through there. And then I've got some um, of my cones here that I was just going to pop glue some of the cones. The gum nuts look much better, but I haven't got any, so you've got gum nuts that you can use. So just to fill in the gaps, I'm just using some of my liquid amber, liquid amber pods. through there, a couple more leaves around here to hide the forest. And through there. Oh, that glue's hot. Okay, into the water. <laughs> So taking that in, and then I've just got one little piece here, I want to do a bit more of the amaranthus just up in here, and I will buy that again. This one will be a little bit trickier for some of you to do, but once you've actually got your mechanic right, you'll be away. A bit more in through here, some more pots, nearly done. Does look a lot better with fresh plant material, by the way. I'll have a bit of a tidy up. Now Now the idea is to work with your mechanic. Is there any other questions with anyone wanting to know any more about doing this design before you make a start? So that is it there, making your mechanic. Normally it's about having contrast of texture and not having so many busy patterns, um, but we were limited on the plant material, but I thought I'd show you one if you're using magnolia leaves and fresh plant material. This is what you can end up with. So this one's been done with fresh, um, and you can see that, and I've used the magnolia leaves here. I've got the brown on the back. If I move over this way, I've got the brown on the back. You can see uh, this is the green side, and then I've reversed it on the back. Instead of doing the um, sandpaper on both sides, I've done one side with the magnolia leaves with the green showing, and one with the brown. So when you flip it over, you get the green, and then the brown, and then opposite on the other side to give it unity. Um, but you can see this looks really quite nice, even if you did it going horizontal. But at the moment, I just want you to have a go at making this mechanic, having a bit of a play with it, a bit of an experiment with making that mechanic and see what you come up with. So, have fun. I would like to invite Ms. Gail Robinson to give acknowledgements to Francine for this wonderful workshop. Oh, thank you, Shalane. You're most welcome. Thank you, Shalane. Francine, what a delight. On behalf of New South Wales Floral Art Association, and convention participants, I wish to thank you for today's demonstration and workshop. Thank you also, Madhu, for sourcing, packaging, and posting our ingredients. Francine, a fabulous design, and the template has endless possibilities. Your attention to detail and references to elements and principle, principles of design throughout the demonstration and workshop is extremely helpful. Your friendly, positive communication style makes it a joy to observe and participate in the workshop. Thank you again for your concepts, time, 
and expertise. Thank you. You're <laughs> very welcome. <laughs> Thank you all for attending. You may go off and have a break and have some lunch.